Okay, welcome everyone. Today we're going to do an example problem using Bernoulli's equation to analyze the flow of air through a duct with a changing diameter. So we'll read through the problem together. We've got air at 105 kilopascals and 37 degrees Celsius flowing upward through a 6 centimeter diameter inclined duct at a rate of 65 liters per second. Now the duct diameter is then reduced to 4 centimeters through a reducer and the pressure change across the reducer is measured by a water manometer, which is shown down here. The elevation difference between the two points on the pipe where the two arms of the manometer are attached is 0.2 meters. We're asked to determine the differential height between the fluid levels of the two arms of the manometer. So the first step in this problem is to look up uh, the densities of our two working fluids. So we've got the density of water and the density of air. Now the density of liquid water is essentially a constant because water is incompressible and that's going to be a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Now we can look up the density of air for these given conditions, 105 kPa and 37 degrees Celsius. And Bernoulli's equation is a, an equation for incompressible flow. So the assumption that we're making here is that the density of air is constant throughout which is reasonable for these conditions. Now, if we were operating in much higher temperatures or much higher flow rates, that assumption would fall apart for air. But for here, um, it works pretty well. So we look up our densities. We get 1.14 kilograms per cubic meter for air and 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter for water. Now, our next step is to use this volumetric flow rate to find the velocity of our fluid through each duct segment. So Q of air is 65 liters per second. We're going to want to convert this into meters. We're going to want to do everything in meters here. So if we recall that if there's 1,000 liters per cubic meter, we can convert this to 0 0.065 cubic meters per second. Now what we're going to do is we know the equation um, Q equals V times A through any segment. So we can say that the flow rate, which is constant, is equal to the velocity through segment 1 times the area of segment 1 is also equal to v2 times a2. Okay, So we have our two diameters. Diameter 1 is 0 0.06 meters. Diameter 2 is 0 0.04 meters. Again, we've converted from centimeters to meters here. And then we're going to use our equation for our cross-sectional area where air a equals pi over 4 d squared. So we run that calculation. We get these two areas here. And then we're going to divide our volumetric flow rate by our area to give us the velocities. So we get a velocity through segment 1 of 22.968 meters per second and a velocity through segment 2 of 51.587 meters per second. So by reducing our diameter, we've increased the velocity quite a bit, which makes sense. That's what we would expect. Um, so we're going to pull those values over here. We've got velocities and densities. And then we're going to analyze two points um, on the duct. So we're going to call this point 1 here, and we're going to call this point 2. Now, we already know the difference in um, velocity between those two points. They're, they're just slightly in the flow there. Um, we don't know anything about the pressure between the two points, but we do know there's a change in height. So if we say that z equals 0 at point 1, and then we know this distance here is 0.2 meters, so we're going to say that z2 equals 0.2 meters. And we can always define our z locations kind of arbitrarily um, in terms of where we, what we make equal to 0. And it's usually easiest just to make the lowest point equal to 0. So z1 is going to be 0, z2 is going to be 0.2. And then we're going to use Bernoulli's equation. And there's a, number, there's a couple different forms here. Um, this is a form that I like to use where we have pressure 1 over rho g plus v1 squared over 2g plus z1, and that's constant, so that's equal to basically the same terms at a second location. The idea here is this is a conservation of momentum equation, or conservation of energy kind of thing. So, so energy and momentum has to be transferred and conserved through the flow unless you had any sort of losses, which we don't have here. Um, so now let's talk about what terms we know. We know V1, we know V2, we know Z1, we know Z2. We don't know either pressure. But all we're going to need here is just a pressure difference between point 1 
and 0.2 so that we can analyze the pressure difference in the manometer. So if we rearrange our terms here, we get P1 minus P2 over rho G on the left equals V2 squared minus V1 squared over 2G plus Z2 minus Z1 on the right. We're going to multiply through by that rho G, get the following, and then we're going to plug in our values to solve for P1 minus P2. Okay, and something to remember here is that our pressures to be consistent with the units that we used for velocity and height, our pressure is going to be in pascals. So we solve this equation, plug in our values, and we find that the pressure difference between 0.1 and 0.2 is 1218.437 pascals. And now we know that that same pressure difference exists through the manometer. So we can also say that P1 minus P2 equals the rho of water, density of water, times gravity times height, which is the ex expression for um, the pressure change basically from this point, top of the fluid and manometer down to this point, which is going to be equal to over here. So then we plug in our values for our pressure change, our density of water, and our gravity, and we get a final height in the manometer of 0.124 meters or 12.4 centimeters. Okay, so hopefully this kind of made sense how we use Bernoulli's equation to analyze this type of problem. Um, in a future example, we'll work through maybe when we have friction losses or minor losses to also account for, but hopefully this clarified um, using Bernoulli's equation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And otherwise, please subscribe for more videos on fluid mechanic examples, thermodynamic examples, um, and let me know if there's any topics that you'd really like to see me cover. Thanks.